Welcome to another episode of the AO Hardware Show 2023. Joining me, as always, is Sally from EE Times. Hello. And today's episode, again, we've got kind of a mix of a different bunch of AI processors for you. And one that is kind of a management engine. This is weird. But at first, Sally with Vast AI. FastEye is a Chinese data center chip company founded by some former AMD fellows. The company taped out its first chip last year, the SV100. We don't know much about it other than it's a data center inference accelerator, and it's designed to handle general purpose data center inference workloads, including computer vision, video processing, natural language processing, and recommendation. FastEye has chosen to add video decoding accelerators on chip. The SV100 has 64 channels of H.264, H.265, and AVS2 video decoding on chip. FastEye says this can reduce OPEX for data centers. The SV100 comes on a half-height, half-length PCI Express card, which has one SV100 chip running within the 75-watt power envelope. It can achieve 200 tops in 8 performance. We know the chip can support FP16, BF16, and in 8 data formats, which are common in inference today. FastEye also talks about low latency for inference workloads. The company says it has a flexible and scalable software stack called VastStream, which works with all the major frameworks. Vastai is targeting Chinese enterprise customers as well as the public cloud in China. Demand from the enterprise data sector in China is growing rapidly, the company said. But in terms of roadmap, the same chip could also target edge applications, running at as little as 15 watts. A training chip may come in the future, said the company, but they stress that they see inference as the big opportunity in the short term. So is that vast AI or vast AI? It depends where you're from. <laughs> it's nobody knows. We we don't know enough about the chip. We don't know enough about the company. Maybe they call us after they see yeah. this. Sta Tell us how to pronounce it. Standard Chinese accelerator needs yeah. more info. Exactly. So up next, I'm going to talk about Intel's newly announced Max CPU. Now you may have heard of this before. This is Sapphire Rapids with HBM memory. We're finally going to get a major processor with fast addressable memory. Now, technically we already had one before. It's called Xeon Phi. You may or not remember it. Uh, the latest gener the last generation of Xeon Phi, Knights Hill or Mill, it's one of those, I can never remember which, was meant to be accelerated for the Argon Aurora supercomputer. Now that chip was never made and Argon is now going to get Sapphire Rapids with HBM or Intel Max CPU with Intel Max GPU, Ponte Vecchio. But the uh, Intel Max CPU, part of that is going to actually come to everybody else as well. And they're saying it's going to be socket compatible with Sapphire Rapids. Now that HBM2, HBM2E technically, there are 64 gigabytes on this CPU with up to 56 performance cores. They've said every CPU will have 64 gigabytes, though the core count may differ lower down the stack. And one impressive thing here is that you can actually boot this processor without DRAM which is going to be a first for this industry. Now, what makes it an AI accelerator? Well, so much of today's modern inference workloads in the data center in the cloud today still rely on CPUs. As a result, these CPUs will support new advanced matrix extensions and next generation VNNI, variable neural network inference, but int8 and others. And HBM here helps a lot with uh, memory bound CPU workloads you know, up to a point. The, the key thing here is Sapphire Rapids plus HBM also integrates technology developed with Intel's Optane technology. Do you remember that persistent memory that they could attach to the CPU, like DRAM, but with large capacities? Well, the same sort of idea is being used here, where the HBM can either be used as a separate cache to DRAM or as a workload scratch pad to help accelerate uh, the workloads that can take advantage of it. Now, Xeon Phi could do that as well. And this processor will also support uh, uh, Crow's Pass, Optane 300 series, which is technically going to be available, but there's not going to be any future development on that. Uh, either way, expect these Max CPUs to be fundamental in the AI ecosystem as they roll out through 2023. Startup Perceive caused a bit of a stir when it came out of stealth in 2020 with a 20 milliwatt edge chip it said could do 55 tops per watt. 
At the time, this is an order of magnitude better than anything on the market. The company's claims for its Ergo chip were that it can do four tops, but it's GPU equivalent tops. That is, they're not claiming to do four tera operations per second. They're saying you'd need a four tops GPU to get the same result. And the 55 tops per watt figure is based on the GPU equivalent number. For more of a real world benchmark, the company claims Ergo can handle ResNet 50 at 289 inferences a second. Because of the power efficiency, that works out more than 3,000 inferences per second per watt. We still don't know much about Perceive's architecture, other than it doesn't have a Mac array because the company isn't accelerating Mac operations. What we know so far is they do some kind of clever maths, somehow computing the inference with fewer operations. There are a few other tricks up Perceive's sleeves. Aggressive power gating and clock gating enabled by the deterministic nature of inference. So there are no branches in the code. So we know what we'll need to switch on on the chip and when. On chip, there are some other blocks for efficient audio and image processing, including an image preprocessor and a DSP for audio preprocessing. Perceive says Ergo can run Im image and audio processing inference simultaneously, which would be easy to imagine in a battery powered consumer device, such as AR glasses or a laptop or maybe even security cameras, robotics, and drones. So one of the things that is vital when measuring the performance of an AI hardware chip, there are several factors here. Throughput, latency, power, utilization, efficiency, and software adoption hurdles. The uniqueness in Grox TSP, or Tensor Streaming Processor, is that latency. Every inference operation on this TSM TSP is the same latency guaranteed. In Grok's bilane processor, the, delayer stays, the data stays still, while the operations that change, leading to this consistent latency that has become a must-have for ecosystems relying on performance. If you're cycle counting, this is what Grok is doing. It knows where the data is on the chip and when at any given time. Okay, there's a large bank of SRAM, but there are no caches here. If you can do that, if you know exactly where the data is, then you know 100% of the time where when your inference is going to end. Most chips often cite 99% latency for their service license agreements, but with Grok, it's all the same. And there are plenty of use cases where that has value. Each Grok One chip has 220 megabytes of that SRAM for concurrency and a cumulative 480 gigabyte per second chip to chip link. And that can be for up to a thousand chips or more in one uh, big batch. It does that with using a mesosynchronous link which acts like a synchronous link. Each chip also has instruction control queues, thousands of tensor vector units, and dense matrix multiplication down to the int8 quantization. One Grok node has eight of these Grok1 cards in a 4U chassis, which uses two AMD Rome CPUs as hosts. One of these systems is capable of six petaops of int8. Now, while this is interesting, the Grok1 chip's actually been out for a couple of years now, and we're expecting to hear about Grok2 the next generation, sometime soon. John, if you're watching, soon, please. Hurry up. Please. <laughs> Light Elegance is an optical computing startup spun out of MIT in 2017. The company's demonstrated a chip based on its PACE technology running the Ising problem, which is a hard maths problem that's difficult to accelerate with GPUs, not AI per se. Light Elegance can do the Ising problem hundreds of times faster. While this isn't AI, Light Intelligence is working on an AI accelerator based on the same technology, and we'd expect to see the same benefits that come with other optical computing plays, such as super fast computation at very low energy. Like competitor Light Matter, Light Intelligence uses the Maxender interferometer as its compute element, but the design of its interferometers is a little bit different. Instead of using MEMS to change the physical shape of the waveguide in its interferometer, Light Intelligence instead injects electrons to modulate the waveguide's photonic refractive index to modulate the light passing through. But like light matter, light intelligence is facing some of the same types of challenges. Photonics chips are essentially analog chips, so there's not much leeway for things like device variability. Everything has to be carefully simulated, iterated, and tested. As with other optical solutions, you have challenges related to reliable assembly and getting light in and heat out. Light intelligence's demo chip is 12,000 photonic devices running at a gigahertz. Uh, running at 1 gigahertz is quite challenging because the light pulses are less than a nanosecond, so noise and crosstalk start to become a big deal. Light Intelligence has taped out a bigger chip, an AI accelerator based on the same pace technology as in the demo, so we expect to see that enter the market pretty soon. And now for something completely different. I'm going to talk about New Reality NR1. It's not 
really an AI accelerator chip, but they're labeling it as an AI server on a chip, due in second quarter of 2023. So New Reality started in 2018, and partners include, have included IBM, Lenovo, and AMD. Right now, they're using IBM's inference AI IP, but I just said they're not doing AI, so why do they have AI IP? Well, to date, they're shipping FPGAs, with the first silicon coming soon, but what they have here is a heterogeneous chip that improves the allocation of AI compute resources. Why would you need that, you might ask? Well, New Reality here aims to lower system bottlenecks by lowering AI operation latency. This means accelerating things like load balancing, job scheduling, queue management, quality of service, and monitoring support for any AI workload. Its aim is to be agnostic to any deep learning architecture which is applied and supports data types down to int2. What you do with this system is connect it to, uh, it's a PCI card and you connect it over PCI to a host. On board are multiple types of processor, such as standard CPUs, DSP, video and audio processing, and an AI pipeline to accelerate that load balancing, job scheduling, queue management, quality of service, and monitoring support workloads. Why is this important, you might ask? Well, there are certain inefficiencies in how AI is computed today. I've seen uh, situations of companies where they've literally accelerated the Linux kernel by 40% by improving some of the operations which aren't related to AI at all. Now, so while this isn't an AI chip, it's using AI to accelerate AI. And that's kind of why I included it here. And the fact that it's using IBM's IP is also in itself interesting. Thanks for watching our eclectic mix of AI chips from across the industry. It's been another great episode and we hope you'll join us again next time. If you're watching this, when it comes out, check out our podcast, which should be up around about the same time. Links in the video description. If you're binge watching us after the fact, then enjoy the next episode. Thanks, Sally. <laughs> Bye.